Hello friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch. Welcome hip cats and groovy chicks. Welcome brothers and sisters. It's a special month here and I know people watch me from all over the world and I really appreciate that. And you know I wrote a book called The Jazz Piano Book Methods and Songbook and it's a culmination of all my teaching through the years. And I want to make that book available to anyone that wants it. So I have a special deal this month. But I want to show you the inside of the book in detail. People ask me, will you give us a sample page? I'm going to do more than that in this video. I'm going to show the inside, the outside. I'm going to talk about the concepts. I'm going to show you the endorsements. And I want to make it available to anyone that wants it. So please watch this video and then write to me. So here we go with a look inside my book. Okay, I'm going to take you through my book. I'm going to go rapidly because I want to get this through this without taking up too much space. But if you want to slow it down, just you can hit the uh, space bar to stop it and you can reverse it using the arrow. So here's volume one. And at the beginning you have the introduction and you have about the author. And then you have the table of contents, all the details here. Now I'm going to touch on specific details. But there'll be meter readings for these so you can uh, find these particular subject matter uh, very quickly using the meters. Now, start out, this is beginner level, so I'm starting out with the simplest thing. This chromatic scale you learn first. Now, I apply it to tunes right away so you can see how the chromatic scale is working within tunes that you know, well-known songs. And then you get the major scale, how the major scale is applied to songs, you know, and catchy phrases. So right away it's practical. Now you get right into the cycle of fifths. Important concept to understand music theory, how harmony works and so on, and chord progressions. You get all your scales here, major and minor scales here, intervals. Now we're into intervals, and you're going to have examples and a little quiz here now. You're going to have a fun thing to do with intervals in which I'm going to use every interval as a starting point of a specific song. And you're going to have to guess the song, and later you get the answer. But it's a good way to learn intervals and what they sound like to your ear. Now, we're going to apply the intervals and create chords. So the first thing is triads, three note chords, root, third, fifth, major triad, minor triad, augmented, and diminished. You're going to learn the four types of triads that we use most often and also how to apply them to a scale so they become practical. You can use them in tunes. Now, I get into tetrachords. This is a good way to understand how the tonic, the dominant, and the subdominant within the scale, how those three chords work throughout the whole system of, of scales uh, and keys. I didn't learn this in college, but it's an important theory concept to learn, the tetrachords. Now I get into chord progressions, you get your first tune to play. Very simple tune, two, five, one chord progressions. You get into inversions of chords. Now let's skip over to get into altered triads now and a couple examples of more tunes to learn to play and then you get into right hand chords putting the chord into the right hand now the next one is we get into chapter six we're into minor scales so we have the natural minor harmonic minor the melodic minor and so on and you have tunes which apply these particular scales specific songs to learn that are practical here's a various techniques you can use in your left hand and then here's tenths. You can use tenths and, and um, broken tenths on a specific tune. Now in chapter 7, you're going to get into jazz harmony. So now we're getting into more advanced beginner levels and, and beginner intermediate. So you're going to be playing four note chords and seventh chords. And the types of chords, and you're going to learn chord symbols. So you're going to learn to play with lead sheets. Now, applying the scale tone sevenths to a the scale tone chord, seventh chords, to a scale, you get the scale tone sevenths like this. And you get what their qualities are. So here you have them, all laid out for you, all 12 of them. All 12 scales and the seventh chords, the scale tone sevenths connected with each key. And now you have the inversions of the seventh chords. More on the cycle of fifths. Now we're going to get into next 
is going to be secondary dominance. Now this is altering any of the chords in the system of the scale tone sevenths to a dominant form. And this allows you to move the different parts, the different chords within the system. So I'm sure you example that on a tune just in time and I show you more examples on other tunes. Now this chapter 11 is really interesting. I harmonized in every possible way I could for jazz and blues. Starting with simple just thirds and fifths. Then, like, then two note harmony spread between the two hands to create tenths. And then three note harmony to create triads between the two hands. And then more three note harmony. Various combinations. Then adding sevenths to your three note harmony. Now four note harmony and adding sevenths. Creating seventh chords in various combinations of spread voicing. So I've never seen this in a book. This breakdown. It's very good. Harmonizing in thirds and sixths. You get a couple of tunes to play. More tunes to play. Now, jazz rhythm and phrasing. This is to learn how to phrase in a jazz, in a syncopated manner. Rather than just taking a melody straight like that. Now we syncopate it using jazz rhythm and jazz phrasing. Or it could be... In other words, a variety of different ways. And it shows you how swing eights work. And then you get an arrangement with it all written out for you in another arrangement using swing eights. Now you get the blues progression in chapter 13. It explains it in theory, how you can change a regular diatonic melody into a blues melody by lowering the seventh and the third and the fifth. And now you have a blues to play. Here's a blues tune that I composed that you can play now. In chapter 14 you're in a stride piano. Shows you the rules or principles of stride piano. Then you get a simple stride tune to play. Another simple, well-known tune played in a stride style. It's easy to play. And then you want to check out my stride um, exercises on my YouTube channel. Now, chapter 15 is spread voicing. So now we're going to have four note chords with the harmony spread between the two hands and how to do this. This is to get the professional sound, be able to add upper extensions. And you get an example, a simple example in a tune, a well-known tune. Here is the it's broken down for you spread Voicings in detail, harmonizing in four notes, different varieties of spread voicings, another tune to play, here's another tune in spread voicings to play, here's another tune, all written out for you note for note, here's another one in spread voicings and combinations. Now you get to play tenths in spread voicings, how that's used, and then you get right hand chordal technique, in which I'm going to put the chord into the right hand now, and then you have a bass line to play in the left hand. Now, here's a wrap-up with a review with all the techniques that you've learned in this volume one. That's the review, and then you get a tune that uses all the techniques. And at the very end, you have the answers to that quiz that you had earlier on intervals with each of the intervals laid out for you, and then the song that they fit. So this is a very interesting way to end. This is the end of volume one. Now we're going to go into volume two.
So you know what it's like to print from a conventional music book, right? You gotta pull the printer out, open it up, then you gotta take the book, you gotta find the page, you gotta lay the whole book down in there, try to get it lined up properly, make sure that no light is gonna leak in, and then you print. Now let's see what the result is. So here's the result. It's not lined up properly. You got leakage here, you got leakage here. Out of alignment and the page is cut off on this side. So now you got to do a whole process again, maybe 10 times. Wasted all that time, energy, and paper. You won't have that problem with this book. It's in a three ring binder. So you can easily just open it up hit the snap, take the page out that you want to copy, put it in the printer, easy to line up, hit copy, and you're ready to go. And the result is it comes out perfect every time. That wraps it up for the view of the book. Thanks for staying with me. Coming up next are the endorsements and also the special deals. So if you want a discount on the book, please write to me. And I'll say until next time, Swing loose, and we'll see you around the ranch.